Welcome to Lesson 7, which roughly covers pages 53 to 60 of the in Automate the Boring Stuff with Python textbook. Now there's a second kind of loop called a for loop. So instead of looping as long as a certain condition is true, like the while loop does, a for loop iterates a specific number of times. Let's open a new file editor window by clicking on File, New File, and type in the following code. Print my name is for i in range 5 colon print jimmy five times plus string i i'll just save this as five times dot py and press f5 to run this program and the output looks like this my name is Jimmy five times, Jimmy five times, Jimmy five times, Jimmy five times, Jimmy five times. So the code in the for loops clause is run five times. The first time it's run, the variable i is set to zero. The print call in the clause will print Jimmy five times zero. After Python finishes the iteration through all of the code inside this clause, the execution goes back to the top of the loop, and the for statement will set the i variable to 1. And then on the next time, i is set to 2, then i is set to 3, all the way up to, but not including, 5. So as another for loop example, consider this story about the mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss. When Gauss was a boy, a teacher wanted to give the class some busy work, so he told them to add up all the numbers from 0 to 100. So 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to 100. Young Goss came up with a clever trick to figure out the answer in a few seconds, but you can write a Python program with a for loop to do this calculation for you. Let's just start off with total equals zero and have a for loop for num in range 101 because it goes up to but not including the number that is passed to the range function call. And in here, we'll just say total is equal to total plus that number. And then at the very end, print out total. The result should be 5050. When the program first starts, the total variable is set to zero. The for loop then executes total equals total plus num for every integer from zero to 100 being set in num. There's a hundred iterations through this loop. And then finally, at the end, the total variable is printed to the string. Even on the slowest computers, this program takes less than a second to complete. Just to go back to young Carl in our example, he figured out as a boy that really, to add up all the numbers from 0 to 100, there's really just 50 pairs of sums that equal 100. There's 1 plus 99, 2 plus 98, 3 plus 97, and all the way up to 49 plus 51. So this meant there's 50 pairs of sums of 100, so you just type multiply 50 by 100 to get 5,000, and then you add that middle 50 in as well to get 5,050. Pretty clever kid. A for loop isn't necessarily anything that's new. You can actually use a while loop to do the same thing as a for loop. Uh, it's just that the for loop is more concise for what it's good for. Let's rewrite 5 times.py to use a while loop equivalent of a for loop. So instead of this, I'll just comment that out. We add i is equal to 0, while i is less than 5. And then at the very end of this block, add i is equal to i plus 1 by using a for loop, we don't have to remember to add these extra lines at the beginning and the very end. So let's take a look at that range function in the interactive shell. You can type something like range 10, and it returns a value that's called a range object. This is of the range data type. Now some functions can be called with multiple arguments separated by a comma, and range is one of these functions. So this lets you change uh, integers to range to follow any sequence of integers, including at starting at numbers other than zero. So consider this for loop, for example. Instead of five, which will go from zero to four, you can say 
12 comma 16. And when we run this, it starts, the for loop starts at 12 and goes up to, but not including 16. So it goes up to 15. So with two arguments, the first argument is where the for loop variable will start. And the second one is the same as the previously where it goes up to, but does not include this value. The range function can also be called with three arguments. So in this case, the first two arguments will be the start and stop values, just like in the two argument version. And the third is what is called a step argument. So the step is the amount that the variable is increased after each iteration. So we could have something like zero to 10, or rather zero up to, but not including 10. Instead of increasing by one each time, we could have it increase by two. You can even use a negative number here to have the, for the step argument to make the for loop count down instead of counting up, in which case we probably want something like start at five and stop at negative one. Note that you can also use break and continue statements inside for loops, and they work just as the same as they do in while loops. So to recap, for loops are used for when you need to loop a certain number of times. The range function called with one argument will loop that number of times. Range five will loop five times. The variable in the for loop will start off at zero and then go up to, but not including five. The range function called with two arguments, you can set a starting integer and the ending integer. So instead of zero, you can have it start at three or two. And the range function called with three arguments has a start, end, but also a new step argument, which is how much the for loops variable increases on each iteration. And you can also use break and continue statements inside for loops, just like you can use them inside of while loops.